blood in my mouth tastes like bile. Where's the brute that hit me, Nanny? Nasty prats out cold. Not dead and more's the pity. What did he want? What they all want. Money he didn't earn. What were you thinking, butting into that mess? You could have been killed. Nanny, my mind's in pieces. I still have terrible visions and I need to know. About the fire. Same as always. You need to move on, Alice. So do I. Well, at least she's not spewing that asylum nonsense. My past is dead. I killed them. I should have saved them. I should have died. But her mind was in shambles. Radcliffe thought familiar faces would bring her round. After a year, he lost interest in their inheritance. Greedy sod. Still, always asking his bizarre questions. Every dose of madness, I'd say, but honest is never the best policy in this life. When she wasn't comatose, she gaped. Eyes like pinwheels, drooled, occasionally squeaked. Never uttered a sensible sound. And like the child she was, she kept her secrets close. Gone off some lurkers, common as cockroaches. And those poor tykes are food for perverts, like the blameless ants that wasps consume or spiders' feeble prey. You visited my room at Rutledge. What you were you called that? Radcliffe paid me for a bit. A woman alone sometimes does what she doesn't particularly feel like doing. As you know. Nurse Whitless said you'd fallen on hard times. I'm no drunk like her. I'm hurting no one. Hookin's not a bad life. Except for the pimps. She also said you might have my rabbit. Please, Nanny, talk about the damn fire. Never seems to help. Look, Alice, I can't give you what I don't have. Radcliffe wrote the inquest report. I'll take you to him. Besides, he's got your damn rabbit. You should remember that. All right, but Mr. Radcliffe's useless. Don't I know it? Little, Mr. Radcliffe. Ah, oh, you're back. I suppose you'd better come up. Mind the latch. Rabbit. Forgotten your manners? And what else, I wonder? You abandoned it at Rutledge Asylum, my dear. 
We've been over this before. In a huff as usual, oozing with attitude and accusatory flummery, I've stolen her rabbit. Ridiculous pretext. She's here about the fire again. All the mad child wants to talk about. My report found her family dead by misadventure. She won't accept it. It goes on and on about her killing memories and her need to know the truth. The alleged truth is, the fire began in the library when the cat knocked over a lamp. The blaze trapped her parents and sister upstairs. Sister Lizzie never even unlocked her door, died in her bed. The guilty cat always sets her off. She denies it, makes no sense, it can't be, etc. Agreed. And from the outset, Alice was my candidate for the pyromaniac. The girl had a fixation with fire. And I once remarked that I thought she might have had a larger role in causing the tragedy. She suffered some sort of psychotic episode. Did I rip his head off? I wanted to. What's left of my brain will explode. Is it mad to pray for better hallucinations? Perhaps I'm fated to expire right here. London Bridge could end my journey. Failure as your epitaph. Uh, I'd hoped you were more courageous. 